Hello, uh, my name is Maria Vittoria Guerzoni. Uh, I'm a sixth year medical student here at Plovdiv Medical University and I've been here for the past six years. I'm originally from Italy and I actually uh, tried to do the national test to get into medical school in Italy, but I didn't and I really wanted to study medicine in English. And I looked around Europe and I found that uh, Plovdiv Medical University was actually doing the test in Rome. So I was like, okay, I'll just go and try that. And I did, I got in and I went. <laughs> I actually bonded a lot with um, my group of friends, well, the group of people that were in my group when I first started university. So you're all placed in, in groups uh, of maybe like 12 to 13 people. And the group I was placed with was actually quite a great group. Um, we bonded almost immediately. Um, they were all really good people. Uh, it was very easy to get along with them. So I actually quite enjoyed staying with my group. And then as the years go on, you just meet a bunch of, like you just meet everyone basically. Like, I think I almost know everybody who's in my year, you know? You have an idea on who everyone is. Um, making friends here is actually quite easy. It's a tiny city. Everybody goes to the same places and hangs out in the same spots. Um, there are so many events on the weekends, parties, um, sh social reunions. Like there's just so much stuff that you can do in Plovdiv, honestly. Even just going to the gym. Everybody goes to the same gym. You're gonna see so many students there. So it's quite easy to make friends, but um, it's normal if it doesn't happen right away. Like sometimes it takes time. And also, if you're not making like the best friend of your life in first year, like that's fine, that's normal. I actually met like one of my best friends right now, last year. So, you know, sometimes like you will meet them maybe towards the end. And that's, that's totally fine, that happens. Use that time to just work on yourself. Be good with yourself alone. Get to know get to know yourself more which is, is so important like i did a lot of self-work in these six years it's very important to be self-aware and to know about yourself and just what it is that you like to do what it is that you like to eat drink anything really just spend time with yourself alone because up to this point you've probably never done that and get to know yourself that sounds crazy, but first year was definitely the toughest year because um, in first year, first of all, you're way younger. Um, you don't know anything about yourself. Like you just got out of high school. You don't know um, what it is like to live on your own. You don't know how to handle certain situations like stress. Stress for me was huge. In first year, I remember, like, bef before I was, like, during my exam period, I would have these, like, panic attacks, but for no reason. Like, you know, it was just super, I just felt so overwhelmed and anxious. And that is something that I looked at myself afterwards, and I'm like, I cannot be doing this for the next five years. Like, I need to get a hold of myself. And that's when I started to learn more about myself and learn how to manage uh, anxiety and stress. So first year for me was a lot to deal with because all of these new things that come into play when you start university and you move to a different country. For sure, the biggest pro of studying abroad is the independence. Like, you cannot gain this much independence by living at home with your parents. It's impossible. Uh, for me, living abroad has, been, has like given me a sort of, um, a way in which I adapt to situations, which has like, for instance, living in a different country 
where they speak a different language, you need you need to adapt to that. You can't just complain and, you know, oh no, I'm going to go back home because I don't understand what they say. It gives you the spirit of adaptation, which you need to have in order to live properly in the outside world and in the working life and in a medical environment. It's a skill that you need to have. So living abroad for me has really helped me uh, to adapt to different types of situations and to have a greater independence. Cons for me have been, you know, missing my family. Um, I'm a person who really enjoys my culture and my food. So here, that's completely different. Again, though, adaptation. You need to adapt with what you have. You can't just not eat. <laughs> you know what I mean? So definitely missing home and being away from my family has been the, the con for me, but not enough to be like, oh, this isn't, a good thing for me. This is not a good experience that I'm living. So I've actually thought about what I would do differently if I were to do it all over again. Uh, this question has been going through my mind a lot um, and I just feel like there really isn't anything I'm a person who believes in destiny and who believes that uh, whatever is meant to be will be. And I feel like every experience that I've had in these six years, whether it was good or bad, has helped me become the person that I am today. Like it's made this experience what it is. It's, you know, all the joys, the bad times, the good times, the bad decisions, like the procrastination, all those things like at the end of the day helped me to become more productive, to become less anxious. It's all things that have added to me. So I don't think I would do anything differently. I think it's a very uh, subjective thing. I think everybody um, has different subjects that they struggle, struggle with depending on the type of people that they are and how they like to study, what type of learners they are. Uh, for me, it was definitely um, the first and second year subjects, like mainly second year physiology and biochemistry. I felt like those subjects uh, are so full of information and you can get so overwhelmed because you're like, oh, I need to know all of this because it's like the basis of medicine. And you're like, this, I must know this and I must know that, but it's just too much information. So it can get a little bit overwhelming. So for me, definitely learning how to study for subjects like this was what made me really anxious. And that's why I struggled a lot with these subjects. But I found that for example, for biochemistry, uh, if you know that you will struggle with this subject, because for example, me in high school, I struggled with chemistry. So I know for a fact that biochemistry was going to be difficult for me to understand. So what I would do is that I started since the beginning of the semester with biochemistry. So because you have colloquiums throughout the year, I would make sure that for each colloquium, I had good notes. I understood what the um, subject was about. I studied, I revised, and then it got to June when I had the final exam where a lot of the hard work was done throughout the year. So it was easy for me to just catch up on that and I just had to revise. So it, it didn't feel like that much work once you split it up. For anatomy, for example, because I'm a visual learner, anatomy for me wasn't that hard. Like, for me, identifying structures on a cadaver was actually fun. So I prioritized biochemistry throughout the year and left anatomy towards the end because I'm like, I can do this in a shorter period of time compared to biochemistry. Ninja Nerd is the way to go because um, he is some sort of genius, the guy that does it. He knows everything about everything. The videos, because again, like I said, I'm a visual learner. So for me, it's really important that I have colorful notes, diagrams, all those type of things, because that's how uh, information sticks in my mind. 
So if I watch a YouTube video and it starts with a huge whiteboard, I know it's going to be good. And this guy writes everything on this huge whiteboard with diagrams and colors and he explains it really well. But it they tend to be really long these videos maybe like 45 minutes 30 minutes too long you know so when you don't have that time there's osmosis osmosis is wow perfection perfection they're like two three minutes with diagrams easy to understand and um yeah they're great obviously osmos these type of short videos will give you the fundamental fundamentals for things which for certain subjects is enough for you to know but in other subjects you need to go into more detail so you probably need to look further into those subjects so that's where ninja nerd might be more helpful but those two were are definitely my favorite and also uh another guy called Har armando armando yeah something like that armando uh, he's also great his are, are like the in between between ninja nerd and osmosis He's great. Those, these three are my favorite. I haven't used books in uh, these six years that I've been here actually, because, um, so what I've realized <laughs> is that um, I like to make my life easier, not harder. So <laughs> I work smarter and um, I work and study based on what I know the professors need from me. Okay, so first of all, lectures. Lectures are super important. I didn't take them into consideration for like the first three years until I was like, wait, but everything the professors need to know are in the lectures. So they are really worth looking at. And then there's a lot of resources on the university Google Drive that um, definitely helped me people write notes people write essays and they just upload them there but you don't really know if they're right or they're wrong because they're written by students so that can be a little bit tricky but again that's why you start earlier you look at all of the um, materials that you have and you try and decide which one works better for you uh, which one you think has good information and reliable information and then you just write your own. I like to write my own notes, 100%. For my summers, it really depended on whether I had reset exams. There have been maybe two summers, which I didn't have any, and those were the best summers of my life. When you don't have exams to give in September, wow, it is, you feel so free, it is crazy. Um, once you get that high, you kind of like seek for it all the time. So I think it's really good if you manage in your first year or second year to see what it's like not having to do reset exams in September. And that kind of motivates you throughout the year to make sure you get to make sure you have a free summer. The procrastination for me was intense. It was uh, I worked a lot on it, a lot. And even now, I am still struggling with procrastination. I feel like you can never really truly get a hold of it, you know? If you're somebody who's very prone to procrastination, it will stick with you forever. <laughs> but you can find little tips and tricks that can help you move on from that. For example, um, first of all, first and second year, um, they were com a disaster. Like from time management perspective a disaster and that's normal like I don't know anyone who got to first year and was like I am the queen of everything I know how everything works I am perfect the way I am no there's no such thing everybody struggles in first year and you just kind of I think because everybody's on the same boat as you it kind of makes you feel better so you're not that rushed to make a change so that's why it took me a while and then, you know, after second year came COVID, so in third year, so I was kind of like, oh, okay, well, here's another break for me. So I had to get even more time to like stop my procrastination, but it just, it got maybe to the end of fourth year. That's when I started to look at my subjects, look at myself and be like, how do I want to finish this year? 
And I just started applying certain things that I learned throughout the years, which for me was mainly um, divide my time according to how much uh, work I have to do for a specific subject. So for instance, if I have a subject that is 200 pages long, what I will do is that I will cut up those pages based on how many days I have till the exam. So if I have an exam in 20 days, I can do 10 pages a day of this subject. And then because sometimes you have other subjects that you need to study for, because in January you will have maybe four or five exams, depending what year you're in, you might have to start uh, studying certain uh, subjects simultaneously. So like time management is essential. And I only started applying that really in my fourth year where I started studying way earlier, maybe in like November, mid-November, but I would be doing very little because I found that for me, that's how it worked. So here subjects aren't that big. You know, you, you will never find yourself having to study a 400 pages book. So it's totally doable for you to be doing four exams in, um, in one month. So for me, you know, I would start in November and because I would have a clear idea in my head on how long it would take for me to, to finish a certain subject, that would calm my anxiety and my stress. And that's how I realized this is how I need to do it for all of my subjects, for all exams. And once you start seeing that you achieve certain results doing that, you're like, okay, this is working for me. I can keep doing this, but it's trial and error, you know, up to fourth year, I, had, I tried so many different ways in which I could study, in which I could divide, uh, divide my time. And sometimes they work, sometimes they didn't, but that's how you learn. Like that's how you know what will work for you. So it's okay for you to make mistakes throughout these first few years of university. I think throughout the five years, it's mainly written. Yeah, from first to fifth year, they pay a lot of attention to uh, your essays, like written exams. Um, you tend to have MCQs or a practical exam before that. Then you will have the essay. And then for some subjects, when the professors are bothered, they will do an oral exam. But that's really just to up your grade, like in case you have a low grade, they will do it uh, to push you up a little bit. Uh, they don't, but the main focus for them would be on the written exam. But in sixth year, it's oral exam. It's mainly just oral examination for everything. So that's definitely something that, you know, you have six years to work on that, how to handle oral examinations. So once you get there, you kind of already know how to deal with that. I would say my main tip is to be confident when you go in there because the professors like to see that you you know what you're talking about and you're not shy or scared and uh, also when you study at home and you practice and you're repeating and memorizing pretend that you are speaking to the professor like pretend that they are in front of you so start articulating uh, your sentences and the way you speak uh, the way you talk about things like as if you're having a discussion you know not just be like oh, this is that and this, no, this is this because of that, you know, like make it in some sort of discussion so that once you're there in front of the professor, you already practice that and it sounds more fluent and flowy. Basically, for every subject, you have a conspectus, which can be maybe um, 20 topics, 30 topics, 40, 50, doesn't matter, it doesn't really matter. And at, on the day of the examination, they will choose one of these topics for you to write. Sometimes it's done that each person chooses one. Sometimes it's done that the professor picks a topic and everybody has to write the same topic. It depends on the subject really, but basically you need to write a topic from, these, from this conspectus. So you know this is the conspectus. What I do is that I write notes based on the topic of the conspectus. So. I will have topic one, what is this subject? What is it about? Then topic two, what are the diseases? So on like that. 
and I will make my notes very colorful with diagrams so that it sticks in my mind and I know when I get topic number 20 I can see it in my head and I'm like okay yeah this is the topic that they're talking about and then I use a whiteboard which it helps me repeat because I will read something then I will repeat it and then I will write it on my whiteboard and then repeat it again then erase it write it again repeat it like I need to do a lot of repetition in order for things to stick into my mind. But again, this is a method that I've acquired maybe in uh, fourth year because um, first, second, third, well, third was COVID and then a little bit of fourth as well. But first and second, I definitely didn't really understand how I was supposed to study with these. So it's a lot of work. And you're like at the beginning, I kind of knew this is what I have to do, but I was too lazy to actually get that done. I'm like, I can't be bothered to repeat like 200 pages, you know, that's a lot of work. Like you're talking to yourself for hours and hours and hours, but uh, like, it's the only way. And then after, once you start repeating and you're like, you don't even have to look at your notes, you're just talking and talking and talking. It just feels so good. Cause you're like, yeah, I know all of this information. But to get to that point, it is so much work and like procrastination kicks in, laziness kicks in. It's a lot of work. It's difficult to have a part-time job when you do medicine anywhere in the world. Obviously, if it's something that you really need, you can find the time for it. I know people who have done part-time jobs here in Bulgaria, but I don't recommend it. I don't think it's something, I feel like medicine is a full-time job. You need to be focused on that. And, but I would say fourth and fifth year are probably the years that you can do it. Maybe more fifth year. If you speak Bulgarian, obviously your options for jobs are much, because you need to be able to interact with clients in certain jobs, like a waiter, you know? But I have known uh, someone who's worked uh, in the kitchen of a restaurant. So there you don't really need to know that much Bulgarian and that can be useful. Uh, you can also work as a, um, at the supermarket. But again, you know, you need to speak Bulgarian to work there. So part-time jobs are a bit tricky here in Bulgaria, but you can find them. Erasmus is a little bit tricky. Um, I actually applied for that in second year, so I was supposed to do it in third year. And I got in and everything, but because third year is a really intense year here in Plovdiv, um, none of the subjects that I would do in that country that I applied to, which was Italy, actually matched up with the subjects here, or maybe like only two or three matched up. So, like, it was it was gonna be just a waste of time because then I would have to come back here and I would have to spend the whole summer just studying and doing maybe eight or nine subjects. So I was like, okay, no, that's pointless. So you can do Erasmus, they offer it to you every year, but um, I think it's really important for you to look at the if the university that you pick and the subjects that they have, like, match up and you know that you will go and maybe when you come back you will have to do maybe one or two exams extra maximum because what's the point of you going abroad for maybe one semester or both semesters and then you have to come back and do even more exams so i would look into that but the best year i would say is probably your last years of university because in the last years of university you've already done so many exams uh, you know more about yourself and how you uh, like to study, your time management. It's just easier to um, face a new challenge of adaptation and um, just, it's just easier for you to face a different type of environment in which you need to adapt again, where you need to uh, meet new people, um, sometimes even learn their language because sometimes you can choose an Erasmus in which they don't do it in English. For example, if you want to go to France, 
they don't have English speaking universities there, so you have to learn French. <laughs> so Erasmus is a good choice, but it can be tricky and you need to think a lot about it. Internships here at Plovdiv are actually organized by the university during the summer for the third years and the fourth years or else uh, you can do it in your home country. You can just go to the student office and uh, they will give you a sheet that you need to bring with you to uh, wherever it is that you want to do the internship, whether it may be UK or Italy. And you just have to make sure that you do two weeks in a internal medicine department and two weeks in a surgical department. The thing is, you're kind of doing an internship all year, really, if you think about it, starting from fourth year, because that's when you start your clinical subjects. So for every subject, you have lectures, but then you also have your practical classes. So you're at the hospital like every week, you know, and teachers are like taking you to see patients or sh showing you things. You are kind of doing an internship all year, so you don't really get to the end of a year and you're like, oh my God, I need to set foot into a hospital because you've already done that. No, I think mainly anatomy. I think for me, anatomy was what made, what shocked me at first and what was probably the most interesting experience I've had here. But simply because you really cannot get that from anywhere really. I mean, the amount of cadavers you have to work with and inspect and examine is crazy. You really get to learn the true anatomy and it's, it's amazing. I have a lot of friends who study in Italy who have to learn it like from books or images online because they don't have this amount of resources. Uh, it's probably one of the top things about this university their anatomy department. It's a good department. The teachers are smart and they're good and you just have limit, like unlimited resources to work with. It's, it's great. I love that. One of the things that shocked me the most here is forensic medicine. Uh, so that's like studying um, how people die. So uh, it's, I feel like it's one thing when you see a cadaver, a dead cadaver. Well, yeah, obviously he's dead. Um, but that's been dead for a while. He's already opened. You don't really see his face. Uh, the skin is basically unexistent. Like, it's very different to seeing a recently dead human being with blood and broken bones and a open skull it's like a completely different experience and it just it's very shocking at first walking into a room and just seeing this broken up human laying there dead and having to figure out what killed him like that for me was just oh it just uh it was not pleasant the smell the, the what you have to look at the way you were just handling the whole process you know you have to take out the organs you have to examine them separately um no was not for me no so we started uh first year uh with 300 students if i remember correctly we were roughly 300 and now in sixth year, we've probably dropped to 250 or 240. So 50 or 60 students have left. But m the main reason is uh, transfers. I have had friends who've dropped out, out of university and like changed their field completely. Uh, and uh, I think that's, yeah, that, that's, that happened maybe in first or second year. So. After that, I don't think I know anybody who's dropped out from third year onwards. I've never had doubts specifically about medicine because um, I felt like it was something that I had this passion for since I was maybe 16, 15 years old. 
and it kind of just stuck with me. There was never really anything that gave me the type of excitement or uh, passion that I would get from envisioning myself as a doctor. Like, don't get me wrong, I don't like to study. I don't like most of the medical subjects that we do. Uh, but still, I knew that the end goal, being a doctor, was what I wanted to do. So although I didn't really enjoy doing all the things, all the things that you need to do as a medical student, for me, the objective was what made me to keep going. But I have had doubts about what I want to specialize in, so the actual doctor I want to be. I've had my mind set on something very specific uh, since the beginning, which was uh, being a surgeon. But um, as you grow older and you learn more things about certain subjects and you meet more people in the field, you realize that being a surgeon, especially a female surgeon, can be difficult. A lot of people will tell you you can't do it. And um, you kind of just, you take that in, you go to bed at night and you think to yourself, like is, this the, this, like, is this really, can I do this? Like you start questioning yourself and uh, it's a lot to deal with. I still am questioning myself. I think you will be doing it until, until you actually make a decision at the end of the day. But um, I think you just, I think when you know yourself really well, uh, you kind of start to realize that what other people say doesn't really matter and it just the joy of doing something which you think yeah this this will actually make me happy it's just enough for you so i just stick to that thought well i always say to somebody who's looking to start medicine that they should have some sort of previous experience into that or an idea maybe have a family member who's into that field or uh, visit the hospital and be able to maybe follow a doctor around for a few days have just a general idea on what it really is like being a doctor because I feel like a lot of people get into it but really don't don't really have an idea on what it is to be a doctor and once you start understanding that you get really overwhelmed and you're like this is not for me this is not what i this is way too much work so i think it's definitely important first for you to have just a general idea on what it means and then once you start even if you have this idea you start you get to second year first year and you're like i can't do this this is too much work first of all do, don't be too hard on yourself like I'm in sixth year I've made it till the end but I struggled like I struggled a lot I think everybody struggles in their first year of university they are they can be tough you're you just you're 18 years old 18 19 years old you're basically a kid it's impossible for you to have your whole life figured out and have and it's completely normal for you to have doubts on your future what you want to do if you're able to do that so don't be too hard on yourself but then on the other hand if you're convinced that this is not for you and it's not making you happy just leave i mean like drop it this is your life and i think you should choose what you do based on what makes you happy forever like I can't imagine anything worse than being 50 years old, looking back in my life and be like, oh my God, for 30 years I did something that does not make me happy. Like, that's, that's horrible. So even if you wasted two, three years of your life doing medicine, that's nothing compared to the rest of your life that you might be suffering from a decision that you made when you were 18, you know? So I think don't be scared to go after what makes you happy. That's, that's all the advice I can give, really. For sure, the language. I mean, I think, I feel like everybody speaks about this and everybody says the same thing. And you come here and you know, you're like, okay, they've told me that I need to learn Bulgarian. And you still don't because 
I don't know why. We just, we, I don't know why we don't do it as, as students. I don't know why we just don't take it seriously. But you should. <laughs> like, you should. Not just because it's easier to get around the city, to interact with Bulgarians, but also for the patients. Like, I am so limited right now as a six year student because my Bulgarian is limited. There are certain things which I cannot do. Like, if I want to just roam around the hospital and find a patient to just inspect and examine and whatever, I can do that. Like, I have the freedom to get a patient and just do whatever I want with him, but I can't because I don't speak Bulgarian. You see where the difficulty is? So it's um, Bulgarian. That's my number one tip for surviving in Bulgaria, honestly. Other than, you know, all the other things that are difficult, like uh, the food, it's so different from what I'm used to. I'm Italian, so I really like my food. But, uh, you know, I just, I've learned to cook here because you need to, you need to do that here. Like you need to learn how to cook for yourself by the right ingredients. So that's also been fun. And what else? I think that's it really for Bulgaria. It's not that, it's a small city Plovdiv. It's really easy, easy to live here. I found it really easy to live here. One pro about this university is definitely the free time you get. Um, so it, it can feel overwhelming at first when you first get here in the sense that you might feel like the workload is a lot, but actually it isn't. Like it's very easy here to find moments for yourself and have free time, travel, especially once you get to like third year because you, you've started to figure out how this university works so you're kind of like okay yeah I, I can afford to do this and I can afford to do that like you know how the system works so it's easier for you to divide your your time accordingly but I would definitely my number one tip is to uh, buy some sort of calendar or um, like an agenda like a planner in which you know what it is, your must do's that you have to do in the week and you divide that time up. And then for the time that you have left, like you divide it between studying and your free time. What I like to do is have the weekends free. So I tend to put all of my work throughout the week. And typically that just gives me my weekend free, like most weekends, obviously before an exam, like for at least two, three weeks, you're not gonna have free weekends, but that's normal. That's just how it's meant to be. But prior to that, like, it's really easy to have free time. Just time, divide up your time. I'm in sixth year right now, and um, it lasts typically from the end of September till the 1st of September. So it's like a year long year, uh, not like the other years in which we'll start in September and finish in July. Um, so sixth year is a year which is based on um, rotations. So you finished all your exams of medical school in fifth year, like fifth year is your last year of medical school you've done all the exams possible i think there may be like 47 or even 50 exams and you get to six years and you have five exams that you need to sit and they are called state exams uh, basically these five exams are pediatrics gynecology surgery which is composed of orthopedics urology and general surgery and then you have internal medicine which includes uh, cardiology, hematology, pulmonology, gastroenterology, nephrology, and endocrinology. And then you have the last exam, which is composed of four subjects, which are social medicine, hygiene, uh, infectious diseases, and epidemiology. I know it seems like a lot, <laughs> and it is, but you do have a whole year to do it. And these exams are actually spread out based on your rotation. So my first rotation, which was from the end of September till the third, well, 
till the 23rd of December was surgery. So it was like three months of surgery in which you basically went around all the surgical departments, orthopedics, anesthesiology, cardiosurgery, uh, pediatric surgery. You spent maybe like a week or 10 days in each of these departments. And then the last month or so you do it in general surgery. And then you do the examination, which is an oral exam uh, at the end of this rotation. And then you start with your next rotation, which was internal medicine, which for me is internal medicine now. Again, this lasts maybe three months or so. And here you visit first dermatology, then physiatrics, then neurology, and then you do two, three, two months and a half in endocrinology which for my group, the main subject, uh, the main internal medicine subject is endocrinology, but for other groups, they may have uh, cardiology or nephrology or gastroenterology. After this rotation, we will have hygiene, social med, etc. for a month and a half. Then we have pediatrics for another month and a half. And then lastly, we have gynecology for another month and a half, where my last exam is in September, the 1st of September. Um, so the thing about sixth year is that um, everybody has different rotations, like the rotations are the same, like the subjects that you're doing, they just occur at different times. There's maybe a total of 15 groups and you're, everybody's divided amongst these 15 groups. There's like 18 p people per group, so these groups are much bigger. They're different from what you were in from first to fifth year. and. Basically, what happens is that at the end of fifth year, you need to finish all your exams. Like, you cannot carry anything with you to sixth year. And if you manage to pass all your exams before uh, the 1st of September, because that's when the registration starts, then you get first pick on what group you want to be part in. Because you need to register, you need to send certain documents to the student office, and then you pick the group that you want to be in, and you pick it based on these rotations so because you already have the timetable of exams and everything you pick it based on what you think will work best for you so my tip would be to try your hardest to get to fifth year and finish all your exams in july because you want to be like you want to pick your your group like you want to know like yeah this is what i want to do because then you can also think oh I have this much time off, like this much time to do a certain rotation. I can totally go back to my home country and do some internships there. Like you can divide your time accordingly. The final grade once you graduate is an average of your six year grades and an average of all the five years before that put together. So, um, yeah, they just, uh, the professors are, are good, they're nice, they're fair. Uh, they know that you've done a lot of work to get where you are. It still is quite, uh, like you need to take it seriously because it's an oral exam. So there's no way for you to get around or like either you know it or you don't know it. Uh, certain rotations have much more um, um, like much more stuff that you need to know like for surgery our conspectus was maybe 173 essays which has never happened for any exam in the five years but you do have three months basically to study for it so it is doable and then other exams like internal medicine has 67 I think essays so that's much more doable so it's fair. It's it's uh, it's not stressful. Sixth year is probably my favorite year up to now. I think it's it's the one year that's given me. Um, I like I mastered almost my ability in uh, organizing my time and how I study. Um, I think uh, sixth year really helps you to do that because the exams are spread out. You don't feel like everything is all at once. So you have so much time to study for just that one exam and you can focus on that completely. And also uh, you have so much free time. Like if you organize your time accordingly, you have time to travel, to do things. Like we organized a ski trip uh, in March. 
We also did that last year. Great fun. In sixth year, what happens is that if you fail an exam, let's say uh, surgery was the 3rd of December and I didn't pass it, what would happen is that I would have to wait until September, once I've done my last exam, once everybody's done their last, last exam, the reset period begins, typically around uh, the 17th or 19th of September. And that's when they start uh, to um, re do reset examinations for every, each one of these five state exams. And then that's probably when you would do it. And then if you don't pass it, that time then you can do it again probably they will do it again in october and then they will do it again in november but the thing is that the graduation ceremony is in december typically like mid-december so you do want to make sure that you've passed all your exams because obviously you want to graduate with your graduating class and there have been people who have not been able to do that because they had a reset exam maybe end of December or beginning of January. So there are, it does happen to people, but very few people, like it's rare. The majority of the people manage to pass all their exams. You know, you have a lot of opportunities to retake your exams. It's doable, Every, you can do it. It's totally doable. My Routine changes quite a bit in sixth year because um, we because we tend to switch between departments a lot. Uh, it really depends on whether the professor wants us to be there or not. So sometimes I will have my mornings which are full where I have to go to the hospital and other mornings for maybe a whole week I don't have to go to, to the hospital. So <clears throat> those mornings are my favorite. <laughs> And I like to study in the library. Uh, so one thing that I've learned actually throughout these six years is that for me, uh, it's really helpful to have a study buddy. So somebody that you study with, especially a group, because it motivates you to study, to go to the library together. You know, you have a whole situation like it doesn't just feel like you're studying. It also kind of feels like you're hanging out with friends. So it makes the time more enjoyable. So I would in the morning wake up, get ready, go to the library. Ooh, that's where I'd meet my friends. We would study and then have lunch together, then get back to the library and then sometimes go to the gym and then sometimes go home. Like that would be my day. But because I've spent all this time surrounded by my friends and still out of the house, Although all I did was study, it still feels like my day was, you know, exciting. And it wasn't just me waking up, staying at home, opening a book and then going to bed. After graduation, I want to specialize and in Italy you can do that straight away. So in the UK, for instance, you would have to do foundation years um, and then maybe do some internship work uh, in the hospitals. I'm not too sure what you do after foundation years in the UK. But in Italy, once you graduate, you can go straight into specialization. But you need to do a national examination again. Um, and basically based on your grades like how much how many points you get in this exam then you have the freedom to either choose where and what you want to do or you're placed there like if my first choice is plastic surgery in Bologna and but my second choice is plastic surgery in I don't know Rome let's say my points are not enough for Bologna they will put me in Rome and then if you know I run out of options and my points are very very low they just put me randomly wherever i may be needed but you can choose to go there or not so my option is to go there and this exam takes place in july i finish in september graduate in december so i have to wait for that following july to come 
and yeah i will just be spending my time studying for this exam because it includes all medical subjects all of them and it's a, um, a multiple choice question exam it's like three hours long specializing this is definitely my biggest worry uh, I'm scared I don't get into what I want to do um, it's my biggest fear I I really do not want to do something that I don't like and um, I'm scared it's gonna take me a while to get there and uh, you know I, I am young I do have my whole life ahead of me as they say but uh, you know I just I just want to start like doing what I like and just start working and start earning money like you know I'm 25 uh, all of my friends work all of my friends are like financially independent you know for a medical student uh, the one thing about us is that we are dependent on our parents for way longer than any other student and after a while like it, it can be a burden you know you start feeling like oh my god like, i'm so embarrassed to have to keep asking my parents for money you know it's like it can be very annoying so i want to start my life i want as an adult you know i still feel like a student and um which i am <laughs> but you know and um i just i want to start that part of my life but i want to do it in like what i want to do you know so i'm scared that it's gonna be delayed for sure the one difficulty that i will have and i'm already coming to terms with it is the fact that mm, so medicine is the same everywhere in the world but how an actual hospital operates is different so uh i didn't really understand how bulgaria operates here but either way even if i had understood it in italy it's completely different they have a different way in which they register patients protocols everything's different so for sure i will have to relearn all of those basic things you know i will have to uh, understand how the hospital there works the protocols but every student needs to understand that like even students who've studied in Italy like they will also have to understand how a hospital works you know because it's not just about the theory and you knowing about medicine it's also important for you to understand how a hospital operates you know the protocols that you need to go through those are important and you only really learn those by working there so I will have to wait for that but obviously being this clueless kind of scares me it's like i will be placed in a completely new environment um so it will definitely be challenging but i'm not the only one i hope you enjoyed this video and i just want to leave by saying that you need to remember that you're not in this alone you're in a whole boat with a bunch of other people that feel the same as you do. Uh, you need to remember that this is a journey. This is everything takes time. Uh, you need to get to know yourself and learn how it is that you will live with this type of experience because you need to be in it for six years. It's a long process. It's a hard process. It requires a lot of work, but I've done it, friends done it, we've done it, and we're nowhere near geniuses or um, incredible human beings which achieve the impossible. We're just regular people who've had ups and downs throughout our journey and have found ourselves to come to the end. I think that's it. Thank you guys a lot for watching. Um, I just want to say that this has been a crazy ride. Um, it's crazy to think that I'm, I'm, it's been this, this long because it feels like it's been a year, not even. It flew by. If there is one advice that I can leave you with and the one thing that I've learned from these six years is that you need to enjoy every moment of it. You need to enjoy every moment of it because it will fly 
do not wish for it to end because once it ends you will think oh my god i am finished and i need to be an adult now and this will scare you like crazy and you can never get this time back these are gonna be the best years of your life you need to enjoy them as much as you can and get to the end knowing that you have no regrets because i feel like i'm satisfied with what i've done how i've done it and i'm happy of the steps that i've taken to get here even if they've made me fall down and if i've had crisis and panic attacks and i failed exams i am still very proud of myself and you will too